Welcome, everybody, to the clubhouse. I am Geddes, and I have here with me Ryan. What is going on? <laughs> What's up, Geddes? Thanks for having me back on the, uh, I don't know, the NS9 airwaves, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, you know, I, th- I thought to myself, I'm like, who should I have on this week? I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk to Ryan because Ryan's not on enough. So here's an opportunity yeah. for me to get the opportunity to talk to Ryan. If everybody else has the opportunity to hear you. So what's going on? Yeah, Donardo reminds me all the time that I'm never on or not on enough. But uh, I think I was thinking about this today. I think the last time you and I were on like a podcast or whatever together goes back to uh, Donardo's dugout. Was Wait. that? I, it had to have been, right? Because yeah. I, I think he had me on as like a guest a couple of times. That must have been it because I kind of uh, took a hiatus from the whole podcasting thing and then I've slowly yeah. crept my way back in and here I've, we are. I'm, I'm in the middle of the hiatus, but I'm kind of slowly coming back in. Yeah, see, that's why you're T- here testing the waters. That's why you're here with me now, which is which is great. Oh, let me go ahead and congratulate you on uh, making the playoffs, Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a <laughs> wonderful time for y'all to be alive, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, Ten point dogs this week, but hey, you know, and just get in, just get in, right? Get, get in where you're fitting, and it's a whole new season. Un- unlike my team, that uh, we we all saw it coming. I said it two weeks prior. I said when we beat the Panthers, I was like, we're going to lose to Tennessee and we're not going to make the playoffs. What we did to them last year is what they're going to do to us this year. And sure enough, yes. they did. So it's just this you knew the Steelers had to sneak in. It just uh, it was destiny. Uh, you know, somehow. And you and you're you're y'all playing the Bills, right? Yeah. For the sake of my brother, I hope y'all don't win, but I could just smell something stupid happening. And y'all right. win that game, and then you'll be right. even more pissed because be like, there's another reason they're gonna keep Mike Tomlin instead of getting rid of his ass. Yeah, and they'll be like, Oh, we got a higher draft pick now, or worse draft pick because we won. <laughs> and, I know I actually wanted the Dolphins to win on Sunday because I think this is crazy when you say it out loud, but I think the Steelers actually have a better shot against the Chiefs than they do the Bills. Uh, but, I would agree with that because the Chiefs are kind of like in a they, they yeah, drop everything. Chiefs can't score. Right, they, they don't. They can't score all of a sudden. So I don't know. Watts out, I think. So it's just it's going to be. But who knows? I mean, the Bills, the Bills don't seem to cover big lines either. So they always make it interesting. So no, nah. who knows? But we all know Gennaro's Dolphins are a fraud. So mm-hmm. so yeah, be, beat well, all the bad teams, lose to all the good ones. The fraud fins. Yeah. The fraud fins. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to pick your brand a little bit because I know there's people that are. That are on uh, the YouTube channel, the Twitter. They may know of you a little bit. They may not if they came in a little bit late. But I wanted to kind of talk to you about your journey with NS9 and how it kind of started. So I guess we'll start there. So yeah. what prompted? Because around the time that we, I think we started Denardo's dugout, it was around the same time that North Shore Nine kind of started. How did that come to fruition? How did you jump into that? Yeah, it, it definitely was, you know, Donardo, you guys had started the Donardo's dugout and, you know, it had me on a couple of times. And I think, uh, so when was that, like 2000? and Because we started NS9 in 2016 because it, it was the year after the Pirates were actually good. And mm-hmm. they haven't been good since we started it. So, oh, so you know, you're the reason. Our, our bad. Yeah, our yeah. bad. <laughs> um, but I think we had, since like 2015 and on, we had just always talked about, you know, we should just do a pirates website or blog, you know, but with, we started it as the blog, but we always had the plan to morph into the podcast. And, and, you know, I, and podcast was as high as I ever thought it was going to go. And then Donardo, you know, always thinking 10 steps ahead and what's next was all about video and ready to go all in and everything. So that's kind of where it, I kind of got out because a lot of people would be like, who the heck is Ryan? I kind of got out right when like video was starting. Like we were, we were doing Facebook lives and stuff on Friday nights and I was living at my mother-in-law's house. It was horrible, <laughs> horrible acoustics. And it was, it was bad. It was like a Valentine's day heart behind me on the wall. And it was like in my pajamas and it was You're terrible, in tune so. with your feelings. That's all. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Right. But yeah, we just, you know, we looked around Pittsburgh and, I know you're in Jacksonville, get us, but you just being knowing us and having to deal with us in a group chat and stuff for so many years, you, you see the Pittsburgh media and it's, it's a mess. It's an absolute yeah. mess. And they, it hasn't really gotten any better. And so we, we always wanted to start something and just be like, let's just be better than everybody else. 
and let's, you know, give our opinions. And like our main thing was it might take a while, but we're not, we weren't, we weren't going to go anywhere. And then of course I, I left, but, uh, but we still, we're still around. Yeah. We're still around. Like I kind of, the, the, the way I pulled back was after we, I, I kind of knew we had other people that could take the reins with, with Donardo and everything. So, so that, you know, I knew it was in good hands and I, I like I've told you, you know, off air and stuff before, I, I think it's, you know, NS nine's blown up a lot more since I've been on it. That's for sure. So since we're here now, what do you think some of the issues are with some of the uh, the Pittsburgh uh, media? Because it was interesting enough. I'm in Jacksonville, but I get a mixture of Jacksonville stuff and yeah. Pittsburgh. So I get a lot of Pittsburgh stuff, which is actually quite interesting. So I, yeah. I, I joke around. It's like, I like I joke around at times. I say I know probably more about New York media and uh, Pittsburgh media than I do Jacksonville media, which is yeah. I guess it makes sense because it's probably too bigger areas in Jacksonville. But anyway, what, right. what are, what are some of the things that you kind of see or what do you think needs to be changed? It, well, so this is what I've always said about the Pittsburgh media. They've had the easiest job for years. Steelers are good. They don't do anything wrong. Penguins and Mary Lemieux could kill somebody in the street and they're fine. And the pirates suck. The pirates can't get out of their own way. Anything they do is no good, blah, blah, blah. And that was the narrative that you had to follow for, a good 20, 30 years. And that's what the Pittsburgh media did. And I think they just got, they got lazy because it was just the same old white guys when well, they became old white guys, I guess <laughs> but they started young, but it just was the same old white guys that were just saying the same crap. And yeah, it just non-diverse. They didn't. And then, you know, as the technology got better, they got older and it mm. was just like the same crap. And it's been the same crap for years. I mean, there's writers in Pittsburgh that are scared to say something bad about the Steelers in print or on camera or whatever because they think they're going to pull their past because they've done it before. They've pulled pull their past. Well, their or, I'm sorry, pull their like media credential, their media. Past. Oh, oh, I said you said past. I thought you said past. Pull their media. <laughs> yeah. So that's what the fear is. I mean, this yeah, happens, I, mean, I mean, look at New York. They they, they bash when they want to bash. They, there's a real <laughs> right. There's a well, real that's free, that you know, freedom it. freedom of speech. But yeah, they've. I mean, like you, you know, Mark Madden. They've, they've, like, I mean, he's been fired from. He was with, I think it was KDK Radio or something. But he was with them. They fired him for something he said. But the Steelers, like, just they kicked them out. They, they, they're like, you're never getting a credential from us again. So I think that you know, really? that's been, yeah, that was years ago. So you know, what he does is he just bashes the Steelers at any chance he gets. And the only player I think in the past. 30 years that he's liked was go figure Ben Roethlisberger who, you know, isn't exactly the, the most moral guy ever, at least early in his career was, but that was his boy because he would come on his radio show and do interviews and, you know, without the Steelers consent or whatever. But mm. yeah, he just, um, he, he, just, yeah. So he, so I think when that happened and, you know, there's talk of other people and stuff, I just think that's the fear and nobody wants to, you know, go against the Steelers and, and things like that. So it's just, so they just say that same narrative and, and it's just, it's just, there hasn't been much turnover. It, it's just, it's these old white guys. And it's just, I mean, it's gotten a little bit more younger, I guess. And maybe so the, diverse, issues, the but, age is what you're saying. Yeah. And it, well, it's not, it wasn't really diverse. And I know we had some guys that came in, but mm-hmm. they like, they don't stay long. And I don't, you know, is that the Pittsburgh thing? Is it just, they move on to bigger and better things. I don't know. Is it just they've had enough of the Pittsburgh readers or, you know, fans or what? Yeah. I mean, I see certain things that float around on Twitter and I'm like, uh, I yeah. don't engage really much or say anything because I'm obviously I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a Steelers fan per se. But like some of the things that I see and I'm just like, this can't be real, is it? Yeah. And There's I'm a like, weird this- and entitlement too with the fans and like Steelers Twitter is it, it's brutal and what I think uh you know Chris Miller from the Renegades dresses yeah. up like a pirate mm-hmm. he was on uh I think he was on Cody's podcast and what did he say about Pirates Twitter he said Pirates Twitter is just like Steelers Twitter but less racist <laughs> you know? and I was driving down the road and about wrecked it was that was the funniest thing because it's true that's hilarious <laughs> Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I see. I guess it's it's different being on the outside, kind of looking in. 
it kind of it kind of seeing this, but it definitely does look like there's especially when it comes to like the Pittsburgh Pirates. It, there seems to be an opening. I guess a lot of podcasts are trying to uh, fill. Yeah, um, that's kind of gaping. You see a bunch of these different podcasts that are you know, you know, they all got similar colors and stuff like that, trying to put their put their product out, trying to compete. And I kind of see what North Shore, like what North Shore Nine is and what it was in comparison to some of these new people that are coming out. And it's not the cast person on them; it's just that when North Shore Nine has been doing it since 2016, you know, there's stuff that y'all, you know, we all know that somebody that's just new into the game may not necessarily know. Right. Right. So. And that was, and that was our, like our thing was, you know, we wanted to give a, cause it, it just felt like it was the same story with all these writers for the, especially for the pirates. So we wanted to do something different, give just a different viewpoint and have fun with it. And that, and, and that's the thing. a lot of these, like, you know, at that time it was all blogs. Like the pirates had a ton of blogs all over the internet and, you know, some lasted and, you know, some went on for years, but now it, it morphed into all these different shows and podcasts, but they, it just ends up being like, they take themselves, a lot of them take themselves way too seriously. Ding, 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 ding. It like way too serious. And then they start fighting with each other on, you know, on Twitter and stuff. And that's always fun. But like, that was something we never wanted to take ourselves too seriously where it was like, you know, here's our point. But if you don't agree with us, well, F you, you know, and stuff, but it's just, it ends up being like, yeah, there's just, there's so many that take themselves serious. And that's why I like what, Donardo and Jim and Tyler and everybody Cody has done that, you know, like North Shore Nine is looked as viewed at, I think on at least on Twitter, about like we're like the memes, you know, like we we send out the memes and the funny stuff. And when something happens, you know, we're always kind of putting graphics or a meme or whatever out there as a joke. So, you know, we 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 kid around and, and have fun with it. And I think that's uh I think we've stayed true to that. I think that's what a lot of people like because yeah. I, I've look, I've seen a few people and I'm like one person in particular. And I was like, wait, this person is not like part of the actual, like, like organization is not like an actual media guy. They're like, no, no. And I'm like, but this dude takes himself real oh, serious. Yeah. yeah they, they serious. Th- Yeah. They think they're like, like, like credentialed media. And it's just, and my thing, you know, that's a whole different thing too. I could go into because I've, I worked in media relations and in minor league baseball. And I interned, I interned with the pirates, like, God, I'm so old in 2005. Mm. So like I, and I, you know, we set up cause you're working between the media and, and the players and stuff. So I, I saw it then, but it's just, hopefully you don't hear my kids yelling in the background. Oh. I hear mine. <laughs> well, there you go. So <laughs> that's good. Yeah, a lot of that most of the time doesn't translate on, doesn't pick up on camera. So that's good or, or audio. But um, so like that was my you know job at that end. But like, I don't like, I don't give a shit if you have credentials or not. Like to me, uh, to me, a game story or, you know, if you're doing a piece on a player and you're, you're obviously you're talking to that player, that makes sense. You mm-hmm. need some quotes or some information from them for the article. But right. if you're just writing your opinion on, hey, here's what I think the Pirates need to do in the next three months to compete or to put a team together this offseason, you know, what do you, or, or doing a, a post game recap, who gives a shit what the manager says? 99.9% of the time, it's, it's garbage. So, like, I, I've said that for years. I just don't feel like these people like make it, you know, like, oh, I got credentialed or I need credentials. And it just, to me, it's just not that big a deal. Like, I don't, like, I hate you. You know that we just talking about other stuff. Get us before we, we hit record. I Can't hate talk about like, that here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I hate like when I watch. I love the NFL. When I watch games, like I won't watch a second of pregame, and and like very, I won't watch very much postgame. Like I just mm-hmm. don't need it. Like it's just it's the talking heads and the same bullshit. Say the same it, stuff. The same yeah. talking points. Yes. And it's just I don't need it. Like just start the game. Let's go. Like I can form. I can form my opinion on who's good and who's not. And, and that's, so that, you know, that's kind of what we wanted with the North Shore Nine. Like, we don't feel like, you know, you get the, well, you're just fanboys. Well, yeah, but reporters that were reporting on the team were fanboys or they, some of them still are. You see right. Pony, uh, Philip Pony on Twitter all the time, you know, cheering and posting videos of him going nuts. And I mean, he outright cheers and he's, he's a main radio host on, on the fan in Pittsburgh. So to, to me, it just, you don't need the credentials. I don't feel like it's a big, you know, a big deal that, 
makes you feel the legitimate mind. Now, if you have, you know, now these people that are writing articles or broadcasting that don't have degrees or don't have a journalism degree and are trying to be a reporter, that's a whole different story. But right. But to, but to me, I'm like, we're just giving our opinion here. Like we're fans and, you know, take it or leave it, you know? Right. I've seen you and uh, Philip Pony get into it a little bit. <laughs> I love, Pho- I love Pony though. Now, like he was always the guy like he, he, I mean, he still does. He throws out these ridiculous takes and they're always wrong. Like it's, <laughs> he's like, he's batting like a thousand the, the wrong way. So, so he posts these and like, you know, he gets, he's doing it right. He gets a ton of interaction. He knows what he's doing. And now I just like, it's kind of like it probably, cause he's come on the North shore nine with Donardo and, it, he didn't say it in so many words, but it's a bit. And it's like, I, now I love it. And it's like, so I love his, I love when he's on there in his videos and he'll do these videos from uh, the, the giant Eagle, the get go car wash and his cars like, cause it, that's their sponsor. So he's mm-hmm. sitting in the car while it's washing and he's ranting about Mike Tomlin or something. It's hilarious. <laughs> so what he's doing is working and now you have <laughs> right. a little bit more respect for it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Nice. So, yeah, so you, not you, talked, you talked a little bit about your uh, your you intern before with the the Pirates. So talk talk to me a little bit because you don't still do that. So that's probably a previous gig. So t- tell me about that. Yeah, I've been all over the map on careers, as mm-hmm. as you know. And now we're in real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was right out of college. You know, I wanted to do something in sports, and I was a journalism communications broadcast major, and um, you know, it was like wait. Hey, let's go work for a sports team. I sent a bunch of, in, you know, applications out and got the pirates. The Steelers did not respond. The pirates did. Um, you know, I don't know. Just the Steelers are too good. They only want champions. Everybody. That's why. Yeah, it's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> so pirates called, I ended up, I interned with them in the summer of Oh five and mm. yeah, it was great. Like we just, we hung out in the press box. We did press notes, game notes, uh, put the media guides together. You know, I got to meet a, all pretty much all the announcers in the league and, you know, and that's so I, I got to know a lot of the media members through that, obviously, because we were setting up interviews and things like that. And and then so, you know, I did that. It was, you know, the Pirates were awful that year, like 30, 40 games under 500 or something. Mm-hmm. They, were, they actually were. That was the year. Oh, five. They were right around 500 in like June. And then the door fell out. And they, yeah, they went went down fast. But um, yeah, it was a great experience and everything. And then I worked I went I went from that and worked in minor league baseball for a couple of years as like media relations PR and oh. um, you know, it's just my internship was unpaid, which I know that's a big thing these days. No, everybody, you know, they should be getting paid this and that. And it's like, no, you got to earn your way and all this crap. But the minor leagues were like the same way. Like working for a minor league team was just as bad as playing for a minor league team. Like you didn't make really? any money. You didn't make any money. You know, I think I did. I was living in Fresno, California I think barely scraping like 20,000. Oh my like, goodness. And in, in California. That's in, crazy. In, California. Yeah. So it was just like, and I mean, it wasn't in LA, but Fresno wasn't, but I mean, still, it was still higher than living than Western Pennsylvania is. So, you know, so it was just, you, you didn't make much money. You worked like 80 hours a week, especially in the summer when there were games going on and uh, you just get burnt out quick. And, you know, I, I interviewed with a couple, I actually interviewed with, are, are you still a Mets fan? No, don't yeah, like well, Steve Cohen. I, <laughs> I interviewed like with wrong. I interviewed with them for a job, and they they wanted someone bilingual, and I was like, well, Sayonara. So I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was I was out on that, and uh, so yeah, that was pretty. I interviewed with a couple of teams, but nothing ever came of it. And then I I moved back home and got got into the casino industry and and now real estate. So it's been the casino industry. Talk talk to me about that. <laughs> So that yeah, that was uh, and I also saw a lot of media members from that industry gambling, uh, drinking at like three in the morning, you know, for eight hours a day or something. A lot of some media members would come in, met a lot of athletes and stuff that way. But the casino industry was they they should do they need like psychology studies on it. What do you mean? Just, just hanging out at a casino. You could like just hang out at a casino and people watch. At like two in the morning, hmm. you 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 see some of the craziest shit you ever seen. Like I just people fight. I mean, people like literally like physically like degenerate and stuff. Well, dege- stuff yeah, degenerate people fighting slot machines, like physically punching slot machines. We had a guy 
who 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 like kicked and punched a slot machine. Like, I don't know, security was alerted to him because he was like screaming and pounding on the slot machine. Mm-hmm. This never made the papers, by the way. So this is inside information. Oh, um, okay. So security starts following him. He makes like a beeline towards the uh, elevator, goes up. Now there's a parking garage at the casino where I worked at in Pittsburgh. And uh, he goes all the way to the roof. Well, nobody was parked on the roof. Hmm. So security follows him up there and he gets out of the elevator and just starts running to the, uh, to the edge to jump off and they caught caught him. (laughs) But yeah, like he was trying to, he was just trying to jump off, you know, casually just going to jump off and end it. Yeah, it's just going to end it because of a yeah. slot machine. Uh, well, probably because he was, yeah, probably because he was down. Oh, a lot probably because he was hard up from that money. from that slot machine. Yeah, jeez, like it, just crazy stuff. And then you got, you know, we'd have people come in, get us, you know, a girl has never gambled before in her life, mm-hmm. dressed real nice, pretty girl, probably like you know, twenty four, twenty five. She had a great time, won a little money, like had, had a great time. I'm coming back here. I'll see you guys next week, blah, 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 blah. Comes back next week, comes back three days later, comes back two days later, come back three days, keeps playing blackjack. Next thing you know, like her appearance just starts declining. Her really? clothes start looking, you know, she's more disheveled, starts wearing whatever to the casino. And just you, you see it transform into just straight degeneracy. And like, yeah, and then they're in there every day. Playing blackjack with the with the other five dollar players and that are basically just like they're like they're like glued to the seat. Like there's just people that are there all the time. The same That's people. wild to me. Yeah. Do you have you ever have you ever had a situation where somebody was counting cards? Oh yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we had people that we had like, you know, dealers that were like they try to catch people and they like you know, we had a lot of well, everybody thinks that like someone's counting cards, and it's like it's mm-hmm. rare, but you know, it does happen, but we never really got, we were never really supposed to get involved. So if we thought somebody was counting cards, we alerted our boss and then they, you know, surveillance, if they, if they had been winning money over a certain amount of period, surveillance would start watching them and things like that. So we had a couple of guys that if you put their, you know, put them into the system when they'd come in to gamble, you know, it, ha- it'd have a note on them, like, you know, let surveillance know that they're here. And they just watch them. They kind of they study their betting habits and when they bet big and things like that. So to just see if they're counting. But so the house truly always is going to win. Yeah, I mean, and it's not like people say, well, it's not illegal. Correct, but the casino can just say we don't want you to play anymore, and that's not illegal either, which is crazy. But that's what they do. So they were just, you know, they just ask you to leave and wouldn't deal to you. Uh, we had, I mean, we've we have had people actually try to cheat, like put more money on a winning bet. Pool losing money back. What? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it, if you get desperate. You know they have to do what they got to do. Yeah, it's just and there's cameras around. It's just stupid. And there's too many. I mean, I've I've had other players turn other players in for cheating. Mm. Get us. We. I mean, I could talk about this for hours. We had a dealer. Okay, so you're you're playing blackjack. You tip the dealer. Mm-hmm. We get we get the chip. Thanks, get us for a tip. We hit it off the rack. We drop it in our in our toke box. We had a dealer taking the chips that were were tips and putting them in his pocket. What? And and we and we had another dealer. This was a different one. He was taking cash. Like when you buy in, we have we have a we have a drop box for cash and we have a drop box for the for the tips. Mm-hmm. We would drop cash just straight in this box and it would go for twenty four hours and then they pull it off and they would take it in the back and count it. We had a dealer, and he got away with this for like a week or two. He was, instead of dropping the cash in the drop box, he was putting it in his pocket. And the player is the one that turned him in. He, you know, he asked him, like, what do you, why aren't you putting that in the box or whatever? And his, his, he said, oh, well, the box is full. So we, we put it, <laughs> we put it in our pocket until we go on break. And then we, we give that to the, you know, the manager or whatever. So he was doing this for like two weeks. A player alerted us. They started watching him. He was doing it. Got arrested, like on the floor. I mean, see, and people don't. I don't understand because people really think they could get away with this stuff. Like you're eventually gonna get caught, and you're gonna get hit with a, yep. a bigger charge the more money it is. Right. And you're gonna lose a job. You're gonna go to jail. You're gonna lose. You know, all that money you've been making, you're gonna lose. So, 
yeah, it's just not worth it. But I think what what a lot of I think a lot of these people would get away with it one or two times, and then they think, oh, you know, nobody knows, no one's caring, everybody's you know everybody's in their own little world. So then it just becomes you know I can just keep getting away with this, and they just keep doing it. And yeah, we had, we had a lot of people get arrested. That's wild. Like that's a lot, wild. lot of like, a lot you of employees. That and then you moved into real estate, so that's where you're at now. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> we that's, went how, from, that's, that's typically how it works, right? It's like I, I'm trying. I need to make some real money out here. I want to make more. Let, let's why not go ahead and attempt this? Yeah, let's let's get into real estate. So what I was trying to think, like, what's the cheating equivalent to uh, to the real estate industry? Like somebody cheating in real estate. Like would it, would it be like a, like getting a better appraisal or something? Or like... yeah, yeah, <laughs> I would say getting a better appraisal or like. Uh... I don't. I really don't. Know. Or maybe like on a like a home inspection, if somebody like um, or somebody tried to like present the house and like or I don't even know what you or say like the furnace was newer than what it is or some right, like that. painting over like rotting wood or something like that. Yeah, it, like, or like okay, oh so. yeah, painting over a foundation that's like got you know water damage or something or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. So how how is it? I know it's different in different cities. Uh, for those who don't know, both me and Ryan are real estate agents. Um, so. <laughs> How, like what what prompted you to make that move and then and was that the right move for you yeah so it, i got into it i just wanted to invest mm-hmm. and i wanted to get into real estate investing and i mean i had i had no idea what i was doing you know i'm like i don't know how to get into real estate investing and just going on a different podcast and sites that you know do that stuff like a couple of people had said, well, get your real estate license. So I took real estate class with, you know, I had an idea, okay, maybe I'll sell a couple houses and, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll buy investment properties and, you know, I'll save on the commission cause I'll get that, but I'll, I'll have properties and I'll, I'll know, you know, more of the ins and outs of it. So I got into it. Like I was in my class and that was the whole idea behind it. And then once I got started and went through, you know, like my broker's training, and kind of got a couple of sales on my, under my belt. And I think I remember, because you were already in the game. What year did you get in? Uh, you 19. Okay, I was right after you then. Because you had, I, I was in my class in 19. I think I got my license and then COVID hit. Yep. It was like, oh my God, we were we were shut down up here for like three weeks until they got some common sense in them. And we're like, right. no, you're essential. <laughs> it's housing. Right. So so I was right behind you. But I remember I, I closed like my first two deals and I was like, we just had a closing. Like, this is great. And you were like, just repeat that process. <laughs> you, were like, you were like, just do it again and do it again and do it again. And I was like, and that's it. That's all it is. But yeah, so like I kind of, I got into it for, I wanted to do investing, but then I, I got the bug to be a real estate agent while I was kind of on the job. And, and it just kind of went from there. Yeah, that's, that's I guess that's kind of how it happens. I, it, it's it's interesting to hear a different perspective because like for me because I was an underwriter, that's kind of how I got into right. it. So to hear like okay, this is you went w- with one path and it was like, "Oh, look, I, this is actually enjoyable. I might as well make my money doing this." Like like why not? So right. You get a little bit of freedom, but then you don't have any freedom. It's like it's, it's so weird. And I love this. Like family get-togethers on holidays. "Oh, are you working tomorrow?" I'm like, "Dude, I work I work every day. Like I'm working right now. Like if somebody, if somebody messages me or calls and it's a client, like I got, you know, I got to take it. So yeah, it's like, you're working all the time, but like you said, it's flexible. It's more flexible. Right. You can kind of set it, you can set it up to where, you know, how you, how you want your schedule to lay out. But, but yeah, essentially you're, you're working all the time. I tell people like I set my own schedule, which means, uh, which means (laughs) I'm, I don't always have to work, which means I'm always working. Yep. (laughs) Right. it, 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 it's a, at 10 o'clock, somebody messages you. It's like, ah, I don't want to answer this. Ah, let me just answer this real quick. <laughs> right. And then like 30 minutes later, you're still in like the conversation. And it's just like, oh, uh, but you know, it happens. But I wanted to actually, I, I did want to talk about this and I'm sure I figured it would come up. But like, as far as, because here's my dilemma. Like I, I, and I've talked to this Donardo and I think I've talked a little bit about you. Like I hate corporate America. Yes. Like I, I could write a book or two on, on how corporate America, I think talk about yep. destroying the family, which we did before we were talking about before we hit record. I think corporate yep. America plays a big role in that. 100%. But like, as far as now I have a flexible schedule, we're, we're both independent contractors. We're real estate agents. Like when you have downtime, like the holidays just passed, 
I get a- I feel guilty and antsy when I'm just like sitting there not doing anything. Yep. Do you get that? Yep. One hundred percent. And it's, especially it's, now that and, 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 and I know everybody's watching, they're probably looking at like, what are we talking about? But like when, when the market <laughs> slowed down or whatever, it's one of yep. those things too where it's like. Uh, do they say do the things that you enjoy and go out and have a good time and meet those people? And it's like, well, uh, you know, this is a slow month. I don't really want to go out and just have fun. Right. Kind of want to work. <laughs> right. It's like a catch twenty two. It's yeah. like you you have a flexible schedule now, but now like I get like man, I, like I'm sitting on watching the national title game. Like man, I should be like putting a you know social media graphic together or I should be working on my database or I should be doing this and it's like you kind of feel like you're not creating the business because if we don't do anything we don't get business you know so right it's it's really a it's a different change anybody that does that kind of working for themselves that it, it, it is a big change right no I hear you 100 percent so you got kids right oh yeah how many yep. two 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 girls five and three okay so how's how's a uh, fatherhood being? Uh, you have a five to three. Yeah. So how's 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 being a father of two daughters working out for you? Oh God, it, it's it's got to be the most. It's like the most challenging thing ever. <laughs> and I say that like because I think a lot of people would say like, oh, it's not that challenging. But they yeah. either don't have kids, or they're like bad parents. Like you know what I mean? Like yep. Like it only. It's only tough to good parents, I feel like. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're a bad parent, you just don't give a sh- you just don't give a shit and it's whatever anyway. But it's so tough, man. It's day in and day out. And then you know, at the same time what we just talked about, we're running a business and you know, my wife works a normal not even a normal 9 to 5. She works when she works, she works 12-hour days. Yep. So like it's it's wife. me sun up to sun down. Um, now she gets more days off because of that, but the days when she's working two, three days in a row, it's, it's brutal. Um, but yeah, you know, when you have kids that are, you know, not just getting into school or before school age, yeah, it's 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 rough, man. It's rough to balance it. People like, you know, we're in order for us to contribute to society to have our two point, what, three kids or whatever. Oh, is like, that what it is? 2.3? I think it's 2.3. 2.3, 2.6, something like but that. But nowadays, no one's having kids. So isn't it like one... Didn't it go down to like 1.4? Uh, I I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. But I know one thing. I was like, I have two. And I'm like, I don't... I can't do another. No. I can't... I, I, I can't risk another girl. Because no. my, my daughter is my wife, unfiltered. And I'm like, <laughs> bro. I'm like, this is... This is yeah. tough. Like... When Storm got to be about one, uh, Angie went to her mom mom and apologized because she was like, okay, I, I see it now. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like, I, I see it now. Um, yeah, I, I was a hellion because she yep. is, she, I'm, it, I don't know. I think maybe it's just the second child thing. So I think what happens is parents are like real strict on the first one. And then you kind of let, let loose a little yeah. bit. The second one yep. comes, you kind of let the chains off of them. So the second one has um has had more freedom from the more very freedom. beginning. Yep. So they just they just do whatever they want to. <laughs> like whatever you, you can't really stop her. My daughter was she was standing on the top of a, 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 a toy like dog guitar she has, and Andrew's like, "Are you supposed to be standing on that?" She goes, "She goes yes," and I'm like, "No," and she goes, yeah. "Yes," and then of course my son comes in because he's her defender. Don't tell her that. Don't tell her that. I'm like, boy, if you don't get out of here, get off of this. <laughs> it, it's 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 cr- it's craziness oh dude it's nuts and like you said you don't understand it until like you don't understand what your parents went through until you had kids your own like i, I went back my parents had three kids and i'd be like what how like what you know like i, I don't understand like what how the heck because i you know i fought with my sisters i had two older sisters mm-hmm. and we fought my and my sisters fought worse between them two you know, they, they, the teenage years, oh my God, they, so I know I have two girls and I'm like regretting those days, but get us, my girls fight so much, like over everything, everything is a competition. Yeah. Who, who gets, who, who I get out of the car first, they fight over. And if I really? get one out of the other, before the other one, they get mad at me. And like, I've literally had this thought and I'm like, I need to just be the a-hole here to like have them you know, team up 
and stop fighting with each other. Ah, uh, like it's it's just it's crazy. They fight over everything. Die, and when they, and, die the hero, or live long enough to be the right. Hero. You got to because to get them to like work together, they have to be like against me or or, or my wife, and it's just like interesting. So they're so they're older because mine are three and two, so it's a little bit different. So and it's, and it's obviously it's, super's a boy, so it, yeah, it's, it's and dynamic I think, is a little different. See, I I fought with my sister, you know probably younger than we were fine when we got older but they say like yeah the boy and the girl like sister brother doesn't fight as bad as like boy or boy or sister you know girl girl but here's the other thing too like my girls are they're under two years apart so they're like i think like 18 months or something apart you you know you said yours are three and two yeah so like that age gap because a lot of people i'd be like how did you you know i asked parents i'd be like how did you do this and they're like, well, you know, we had them like four years apart. And, you know, so like when the ones two, six, like they can help out a little right. bit or they're at least more self-sufficient. But when you have those two, like almost back to back or not that less than two years apart, I feel like there is no help there. Like, it's just, you have double the, <laughs> double the madness. It's chaos. It's, yeah. It's, it's just controlled chaos. It's really, it's really, that's literally really all it is. I, so my, I have my mom because my mom, I have, we have a next gen suite. My mom lives, she lives with us. Oh, nice. So that's okay. made life a hell of yeah. a lot easier. And oh, she's like a nurturer. She's always, she's owned her own daycare. She's been a teacher, blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh yeah. So, that's, so that's, it's I'm been about to send my very, kids down there. Uh, hey, look, my, my, my mom has, the super is three and he's, we're, we're currently, we're currently like, on this IXL app teaching them like stuff or whatever, yeah. but he's reading and writing already. So nice. we're like, okay. So now my mom is like getting my daughter ready. And she was like, look, I don't want to get them to start it too early, but I'm like, look, they're like Pokemon start them early. Yeah. If they can do it, they do it. If they can't, we'll, right. we'll, we'll just keep teaching them. And yeah, that's literally what yeah. kids are capable of doing so much. And I think parents kind of hinder them by thinking they can't do it because they're not a certain age. I'm like, no, no, they can do yeah. it. If a kid can learn two languages at two years old or three years old, they can read yeah. and write. They can do all that. Yeah. And it's like with electronics too. Like, you know, you hear people like, oh, you can't, you shouldn't have your kids be in electronics and stuff. And it's like, you know, look, it's a like they're good. If you don't, if they're five or six or seven and in school and they don't, they've never touched an iPad or a computer, they're behind. Yeah. Like it's just a different time now. Right. Like, and I'm not saying they shouldn't be on a phone or an iPad all day or for, you know, half the day or so many hours in a row, you know, but. I, I don't think like them having it, you know, at a restaurant or whatever, like is a bad thing. It's just, you know, and they learn so much from that. Like if you, if you're making sure they're watching the right things, or like you said, those apps that are where they're learning, they learn, like you said, yeah, like my, my oldest, she was two or one. She had her alphabet numbers, colors, shapes, like all of that stuff was down because she's watching YouTube and Sesame street and, and stuff on iPad. So like all that stuff was down. Right. You know? Yeah, I mean it helps. It, it, it control, as long as you control the time that they have, right? And that kind of good stuff. That's that's truly all that matters. Now I'm not going to let them have social media. That I will not do because there's some yeah, big, yeah. There's some I don't big, even want social media, and I got it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have had it if I didn't start podcasting. Only the why. Then I was like, well, I'm. Gonna start, I don't know if I'm gonna keep podcasting. And then we yep. get to the point where I get into real estate. And it's like, well, damn, I'm gonna have to be on social media for the. Not only am I on it, I'm trying. I'm actively posting on it all the time, and I'm like, I hate it here. But I know. I know. Got to do. I would have deleted Facebook years ago if I didn't get it my license. <sighs> so, and, and and here we are. <laughs> yeah, here we are. But it's, but it's well, I, well, I appreciate you coming on. Oh, I, I, I do want to say I do enjoy the uh, back and forth between you and Jim. I do. I, so here, here's this is this is what I'll say it on here. So this is what I I get. I get you and Jim are like on the opposite. Where's the camera? Opposite ends of the where am I go? Opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> right. I, I think to myself, I'm like, I'm pretty sure they don't align politically. I'm pretty sure they don't align with a lot of things. And I'm like, and that's why I find these guys hilarious. I'm like, if Jim right. says something in the group chat, I'm like, I'm pretty sure Ryan's gonna say something. And sure enough, boop, there goes Rod. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jim and I, Jim and I butt heads on a lot of things and even how to, you know, move forward with the NS9 at times. But, but yeah, it's, uh, but like with Jim, you know, we can do it and still be friends. Like we're still, you know, like, supposed to be. right, right. And there's some, you know, there's a lot of people you can't do that with. And, you know, so it's just, you know, it's, it's fun. It's, 
you know, I think we had the, the group chat, which, uh, boy, if someone, if, if our NS9 group chat ever got released to the, the public, we, uh, I don't, I don't know how long, much longer NS9 would be around, but, but yeah. no, it's uh well, we butt heads a lot in there. So we, we talk, but it, it's all fun, you know, and fun the, and everything. The, but. the, uh, the, uh, the, Conversation about the three-star uh, linebacker going to West Virginia would have been enough <laughs> to, to oh. get enough. <laughs> you know, exactly. Name. I was like, "What are you talking about?" And then I said, uh, "Oh, and, yeah, the name." Yeah, yeah, and, and everybody should know ex- exactly who I'm talking about. It's funny because I watched this video, uh, this reel on Ball is Life, and they yeah. had him playing uh, basketball. And um, they're like, oh, you know, this, oh, he's the prospect that's going to West Virginia. And people are like, why are you posting his basketball highlights? So I looked at him like, why are they posting this? And within the first five seconds, they're announcing his name coming out. And they're like, Noah Kaniga. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what is going on? This can't be real life. Did, wait, did you, did you see the interview that RG3 did with him? No. Oh my God! Get it? You got? I'm saying that one of them, Donardo, or somebody sent it to us yesterday, and I literally commented, and I was like, I, "This can't be real." But like, I mean, you got to, you got to see RG three is. It's just. I, it's I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out because it's <laughs> his parents knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. It is an yeah. elite level troll drop. You sacrificed your son for the troll, and I'm yeah. like. I respect this because for his name to be Noah Kaniga, what? What? I'm like, this can't it's, be it's, real life. It's like a Ch- uh, Dave Chappelle skit. It, it is. It is. This it is a, is it a Chappelle skit. And it's like, this mm. can't be. And I'm like, look at this. And I'm like, wait a minute. This dude, the first time I saw it, I'm like, wait, this dude, the K can't be silent. I'm like, it, yeah, it right. can't be. And I right. bet you any amount of money it actually is, but they're right. not going to say that but it's they not. Don't. Yeah, yeah, they're like, no, no, nah, nah, the K's in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what, that K has to be silent. What word starts with K-N that you say? Like, there, there's like yeah. knife. You don't say knife. <laughs> so like, like, I'm like, come on. Like, that's got to be silent. I want to hear the announcer that says it. It's kind of, it's, it's no different than I can't say it out here because I don't know how YouTube's going to like it. But when uh, Vince McMahon came out uh, and, and introduced yeah. uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and called him Arnold Schwarz N-bomb, and yeah. I was like, I don't think you said that right. I don't think you said <laughs> that right. There, there's going to be an incident. Oh, kind of, It's, it's going to end up being kind of like, uh, you know, when with, with Reese Davis is saying the let, let a naysayer know thing. There's yep. going to be a situation it's where it's going to drop. Like slip. Yep. Huh? Someone's going to slip. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100 Somebody is going to let that thing slip. And when that happened, I said it. I was like, it will be so funny if it's Roger Goodell. And that, like, this kid is a beast in West Virginia, right? And he's like a top 10 draft pick. And he has to say it, and then Roger Dills is standing up there sweating gallons. And, like, he just says yeah. it wrong because he's so nervous about saying it wrong. He says it wrong anyway. And then just gets canceled for it. And, like, nobody would truly really care. But because right. nobody likes Roger Goodell, they would just go after yeah. him. It happens sometimes with cancel culture. It's not so much about what was said. It's more so about the person and if we can cancel them or not. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you got it. RG3 had his – he had his whole family on there. He was asking the dad. He was like, "Do did, did you ever have people get upset about your last name?" <laughs> like, so they really brought him on to ask about the last yeah, name. Yeah, it all, dude. RG three was just you got to watch it. He was just he was leaning into every joke he could think of with the Hold whole on, family let's see there. Because obviously we got people on here, so let's see what is it? Is RG three interview? Yeah, it was like a real. Uh, Donardo posted it not too long ago. And I, like, oh, I wanted to pull it up on here, but I don't know if that would even be a copyright strike. So let me not do that then. Yeah, it was like a. It was like I mean, I think they did. I don't know what show or podcast RG three has, but mm. it was um it was from some interview he did with them. Okay, it, it was like a minute long or whatever, but it was just a real they that somebody put into that. But yeah, he had he had the mom, dad, and I think like his brother or something was on there, and it was just. <laughs> Yeah, it was just yeah, it was it was ridiculous. Like I said, I was like, I can't, is this real life? I was like, I, is this real? Like I I can't believe this is happening. I'm like, how did this go on? How did we make it to 2024 before that actually became a thing? Right, like how it only it far? like it it only got known because he's might go to the NFL or something, or he's going to he's going to West Virginia. Like 
Yeah, because he announced this. He announced he was going to West Virginia. And then it was like, wait a minute. Somebody in, the, somebody in the recruiting was like, whoa. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'd be like, I am not. I'm like, they'd be like, oh, okay. His name is, I know it, a, a Kaniga. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, he's white. <laughs> yeah. We're not, we're not touching this. We're not touching this one. <laughs> right, we're not right. This one. <laughs> but getting back to uh, Mr. Rosati, um, mm-hmm. Jim. Yeah, he's, you know, he's a, Mr. Louisville, big. I swear to God, the guy's a Ravens fan. Or he says he's a Steelers fan, but he's a bigger, he's a, Ravens. He's a bigger Lamar fan than uh, than Steelers fan. So we'll see if that playoff matchup ever comes up. But yeah, he's just all into to Louisville and stuff. But but no, Jim's a good guy. We're we're all uh, all all in good fun. But uh, but he's anyway, a he fanatic. He's he a says fanatic. yeah, he says he's nice on Twitter. He's going to try to be nicer on Twitter, but it's like Donardo said, it's all an act. It's all an act. He, yeah. <laughs> like, but like he, well, he's, he's currently nice on Twitter, isn't he? No. Yeah. Well, he, yes, but he wants to, well, yes, but what, what he's saying that he posted a, the last, uh, podcast yeah, they were talking about, like, had 20,000 followers already. Yeah. And he was talking about new, new year's resolutions. And he said, well, mine's to be nicer on Twitter, but then his, his answer to how to do that was like, oh, people that have like just like a name like B six five seven two. He's like, I'm just going to ignore them. <laughs> so I'm right? Like, yeah. So that's yeah, so yeah. that's how you're going to be nicer. You're just going to ignore the, the half the people. It's that funny because I truly felt that when when I read when I saw that I was like, he, I think he's trolling Ryan. Yeah, because you know, Donardo and me, me more than Donardo, we can't we can't help ourselves. We right. will respond to that BX5627 and but that's tell them what what's it all up. fun. It's all that's what I'm saying. You're it's see, I, I, Jim, 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 Jim is a good guy, but a part of me is like, yeah, it's kind of elitist to not want to talk to some people. <laughs> you think you're better than them. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jim is rich, so you know. Uh, well, a, uh, well, you know, he's in that one percent. Yeah. Or, or more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or or more. Or more. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> I love that flex. <laughs> or more. Oh uh, we love you, Jim. We just like poking at you. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love you, Jim. He's like, he's like, the clubhouse. All it is is a bash session of me, and I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's I mean, not. I just mean, it could, it could be. You don't. We don't have similar. Like, when you have different opinions from a person, you you gotta have fun with them. If he's your boy. Now, have you? You haven't had him on yet. I have. I had him and Tyler on, but I've ne- oh, since okay. we switched to one on one. I have not, okay. so I kind of like the one on one better um, because then we kind of interact a little bit better, have the conversation, have some. Co- the, the whole point is to kind of give behind the scenes and let people kind of get a feel of the. There's aspects of the show that people get, but you know, right. you don't get to really know the person because you know there's a role that they're playing, right? Right. So like Tyler, Jim, everybody, they have the role that they play. So it's like, man, come on and let's talk about other stuff that's not sports related Baseball. so it's been this evolu- evolution of um where we're going to get but i think it's we, better with one one to one if you're somebody who's watched this let me know if you prefer to have three people on or just have the two and we, and we talk and if I, I think as as the show progresses there'll be actual specific topics um but i think overall i think the beginning stages is getting people to uh know the people of the north shore nine and you yeah one of them and I, I no, I appreciate that, and I having me on, and I, I think this is, I think I like the one on one because a lot, most of the North Shore Nine, you know, shows the, you know, NS Nine Live, it's it's three, you know, it's all three of them, or it's, uh, you know, they have a guest and there's four of them. So besides like the post game shows, which are quick and just about the game, um, you know, we don't really do too much of the one on one, but so I, I like that and. Hey, you, you definitely need a break when you're talking pirates baseball nonstop. So yes. I'm, I'm I love talking, like I said, real estate and kids and just kind of like what's going on in everyone's lives. And uh, it's crazy at her, get us because you gotta, you know, we gotta keep communicating with everybody to because if not, everything's on online and yeah, which is good. You, it's a good way to keep in touch with like our group chat people, but then at the same time, it's like you just don't you don't get to see people as, as often. So it's tough. exactly, exactly. So here we are, and maybe at some point we'll we'll discuss some hard hitting topics that make people uncomfortable. That's right. That's right. And it, don't forget, if you're looking to buy or sell in Pittsburgh, <laughs> give me a call. Give me a call. You and if, know the guy. And if you want, if you're looking for a, you know maybe a vacation home in Florida, I'll refer you. 
Yeah. There you go. Come, come, come talk. Come, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. Well, I appreciate you being on with me. Like I said, yep. if you are in Pittsburgh, you need a royalty. Go ahead and hit my, hit my, hit my dial. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll keep it at that. Um, but please, uh, if you're watching, you make it this far, go ahead and hit the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for more, uh, uh, for notifications to get more of the videos. If there's anything, just let us know in the comments below things you like, things you don't like, things we could change. Because of course, like I said, this is ever evolving, ever flowing. So we kind of need to know what it is that y'all want to make sure that we give you what you need. Appreciate that. Right. Thank you, everybody, for watching and making it this far. Got anything left? Uh, Bucko Mike, put me on the list and put me higher than Neil. <laughs> there you have it, Bucko Mike. We're out. <laughs> See ya. Hey, you all, thank you for watching. I know we try to provide the most entertaining content that we can, uh, and we'd love to spread it to as many people as possible. So uh, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you could take the five seconds to like this video and subscribe to the page, it helps out so much more than you know. Thank you, and let's go Bucks.